This is Saturday Morning Showdown, a hopeful video series in which I'll try to convince you what you should be playing on the best time of the week to play video games, Saturday mornings. This week, I have two games I'm going to talk about, The Gunk and Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. These games aren't super similar, but the interesting thing about them is they're both short, recently released indie games that you could conceivably beat in one sitting, perhaps on a Saturday morning. I'm going to go over the good and the bad of each game from many angles, such as gameplay elements, characters and story, visuals, music, you name it. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll want to play one or both of them. First things first, why did I pick these games? Honestly, I just want to talk about both of these games before the big games of 2022 came out, so I decided why not just do both at once? Both games were December 2021 indie releases that I was long looking forward to. The Gunk coming out at the beginning of the month on Xbox for $25 and also day one to Xbox Game Pass, and Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon coming out towards the end of the month on the Switch, PlayStation, and Steam for $20. Like I mentioned before, both these games are on the shorter side, so price may be a sticking point if you'd like to get more hours for your investment. Pocket Dungeon, being a fun, pick up and play, extremely replayable roguelite, made the price a little easier to swallow for me than the gunk would have been. The gunk really was a playthrough once kind of experience for me, but the silver lining is if you have Game Pass, that higher asking price is null and void. A quick download is completely free. Both of these games are pretty to look at, the gunk having a great balance between lush, green, to dark and gunky alien environments, and Pocket Dungeon having the great pixel art fans of the franchise have come to expect. While I think visuals are a strong point for both of these games, my tastes lean a little more towards Shovel Knight, mainly for the variety available in the many different levels. The gunk looks great, but got a little samey towards the end. It really needed one or two more different environments to spice it up in my opinion. Also worth mentioning, if you have a Switch OLED, Shovel Knight is an absolute treat to look at. Now let's take a few minutes to focus on the gunk. The gunk takes place on an uncharted planet you explore as Ronnie, the power glove wielding, chipper, more adventurous half of a down their luck space scavenger duo. Beck, the more wary reserved member, keeps in contact with you over voice comms while you explore the planet uncovering what is and what used to be, and learning more about the titular gunk contaminating large parts of the planet's surface. I was excited to discover what the gunk had in store for me which kept me chugging along my way through the story. Some of the revelations, while not totally original, had some meaningful undertones to take in. I don't think the game quite pulled out the rug from under me like other image and foreign games like say SteamWorld Dig 2 did with their late game story twists but it was enjoyable enough for me to care about the characters and their struggles and how they overcame them. The planet you explore in the gunk is a pretty sight, with lots of colorful flora and lush environments around every corner. And the ancient civilization structures you come across do well to add little variety to the areas. However, being that this isn't a huge game, once you've seen your fill, the game doesn't mix up what it throws at you very much. Most of the game has you platforming through linear paths with similar puzzles on similar looking areas and it grew a little stale to me towards the end. Exploration was rarely rewarded as oftentimes the branching paths you are met with are A, the critical path to continue the story, or B, a short dead end with a recycled puzzle or platforming challenges for some resources. These resources fell into a few different groups, fibers, metals, plant life, etc. Using these collected resources, you could purchase upgrades for Ronnie back at the base camp. This is another area I felt could have been a little more fleshed out. Few of the upgrades felt meaningful, I have a hard time remembering what the upgrades actually were in most cases. It just felt like I was choosing upgrades for the sake of checking a box. I never put too much thought into which one would help me on my journey going forward. The basic gameplay of run, jump, suck up gunk doesn't really change either with these upgrades. You do get a fun little ranged attack that can stun enemies but combat was rarely a focus and I think more platforming options such as the double jump or hover of some sort would have felt more meaningful from moment to moment. Also, the action of sucking up gunk while satisfying early game started to wear on me more and more and felt like a chore rather than the cathartic experience it was at the beginning. The gunk gives a fun yet simple adventure through a beautiful alien planet that you could conceivably beat in one sitting. It took me too personally. 
you're looking for a short game to experience over some free time one weekend, give the gunk a try. Especially if you have Game Pass, I would say no harm could come from trying it. While the gunk's early game highs left something to be desired by game's end, at the very least, I think the gunk shows promise for Thunderful's Image and Form's future 3D games as a solid foundation to build upon. Now let's switch gears over to Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Developed primarily by Vine and published by Yacht Club Games, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon is a new, puzzly, roguelite take in the world of Shovel Knight. One morning, after Shovel Knight dozes off at an old, reliable, cozy campfire, they discover a box nearby. After opening said box, Shovel Knight is sucked to the world of Pocket Dungeon and meets some new characters in the Shovel Knight world, Chester and Puzzle Knight. You go back to the base camp that serves as your hub where you can buy items, cosmetics, and talk to other travelers. You also will find any of the other knights you have saved here and can switch between them before runs. Each knight plays a little different, bringing different moves, abilities, and gameplay elements to the table. After choosing the knight that best suits you, you set off to defeat the pocket dungeon master hoping to free yourself and everyone else trapped inside. At this point, the game basically functions as a roguelite as you go from one area from the Shovel Knight world to the next, creating and destroying chains of lovely colored and designed enemies along the way. Every step you take, enemies and blocks fall from the changing puzzle grid around you. A key thing to keep in mind is unless you kill an enemy, they will always hit you back when you decide to attack. This makes creating chains extra important because you get more bang for your buck damaging several enemies at once since you only get hit from the one enemy you initiate the attack on. To help you along the way, health potions will also form from the top of the screen to keep you in fighting shape. To be completely honest, this game was much harder than I envisioned it before playing it. The default settings only give you small, limited time to choose a move or the board will skip your turn and move one set down on its own. This creates a pressure for you to keep moving so that you don't get overwhelmed by blocks from not destroying enemies. This, along with the infectiously upbeat music, had me constantly making mistakes. I felt rushed to keep up with the music, which isn't actually a thing, and even more rushed to not let the constant stream of enemies and blocks move faster than me. This made for a frustrating beginning of my journey. Dying once would end the run, and I was really getting nowhere. Luckily, there are plenty of difficulty slider bars to make the game a completely different experience if you want to. I had loads more fun turning the board auto movement to zero and bring my lives from one to infinite. This helped me enjoy the game much more as a puzzle game than it was before and allowed me to make the moves I wanted to make and not the ones I felt like I had to make. I played through the whole game like this and honestly I would recommend the game this way to most other people. There's no downside that I could find in doing this. I still got the best ending to the game and didn't see any feats that required me to keep the game on its hardest settings. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I want to expand and clarify a bit on the music. Like I have grown to expect from previous Shuffle Knight experiences, the music in this game is fantastic. Almost too fantastic if I say so myself. My, gr my brain kept wanting me to move to the upbeat tunes like I was playing Cadence of Hyrule, and I found myself not paying attention to the board, but more to the music. This is on me, as in no way the game tells you to, that music plays a factor in when to move, but it was still something I had to grow through. The music, in combination with the great colors and art on screen, made for a great presentation overall. Overall, both of these games have a lot to offer. The Gunk lets you explore a fun alien world and tells a surprisingly meaningful story along the way in its short linear experience. It didn't meet the unreasonably high expectations I have grown after playing previous Image and Form games, but it's still something I'm glad I played. Pocket Dungeon was a surprise to me. I beat the game in my first sitting, but in no way did I feel like I was done yet. There is so much to offer and so many different characters to play as, each feeling like their own little versions of the game. I can see myself curling up for a few quick runs in this game when I have the time for the foreseeable future. If I had to recommend one game to play, I would have to give it to Pocket Dungeon. I know I presented this as a competition of sorts, but honestly both games have their merits and will feed different wants and tastes. If you have ample time, play both. It would make for an enjoyable weekend of indie games in my opinion. 
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and would like to leave a like, that would be very kind of you. Subscribing would be cool too. Or dislike, I'm not too picky. Please leave a comment below with your thoughts on these games or in any feedback you have on the video as a whole or the concept of Saturday Morning Showdown. I'm still workshopping what I want these videos to be. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.